Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Gibbon, your host, and uh, my buddy, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How you doing, man? Good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you, too. Uh, I, I love sort of talking to you right after your, uh, you, you do Bible studies around there. It's like being a pastor or something. Um, and, and so you always kind of come chock full of ideas. It makes it super easy for for both of us. Uh, it's like that right low and outside. Um, when we we sort of deal with, you know, what would Jesus say about um one of the ones that, that you you just tossed me was uh, definitely worth talking about. What does Jesus say about social standing in the church? Uh, it, it, it's timely because, I mean, we, we sort of have um, a, a church that's supposed to embrace the least of these, uh, but also it'd be cool if everybody tithed. Um, we, we have a, a church where Jesus confronts the, the Pharisees who who give uh, many, but the, the widow who gives her last mites. Uh, there, there's a lot about money. There's so much about money in, in the Bible that, that people can sort of take Jesus and the gospel completely out of it and make a financial course out of it. And I'm not going to name any names. But um, how do we actually find, you know, the forgiveness of sins and hope and, and you know, Jesus and all of that? What does Jesus say about social standing in church? Yeah, I, it's, it's man, I mean, we got what, five to 10 minutes, right? We could, we could spend hours it's a cake. on this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, but it, it is, it's applicable, is it not? I mean, it's just, it's extremely applicable. Um, I would say first and foremost, and I think you mentioned earlier, we were talking that this is not socialism, right? I mean, this Mm -hmm. is not communism or socialism that we're talking about by any means. Um, But as we understand this, it's how how we treat the standing of one another. And I'm thinking of this passage Uh in James, the book of James, uh, chapter one, uh, it's verse eight, nine, and 10 ish in that area talks about the uh, those that are lowly, that you exalt them and that those who are rich. Uh, that they would uh, understand that their finances and their money, that it's, you can't take it with you, obviously. And so uh, if you can't take it with you and the riches themselves don't actually uh, technically enhance your status uh, before God Almighty, that that your riches are just a just a mere tool, uh, then, then those that are, find themselves in positions of wealth, of stewards of good wealth, um, that they would be humbled, that they would humble themselves. And so it's really, it's a willingness uh, really motivated by by love, right? It's love for one another as, as a neighbor. And so that person in the church who uh, maybe has no social standing in the culture, maybe uh, they live in the wrong neighborhood, uh, maybe they don't have the right job, or maybe they uh, uh, don't have the right uh, intellect, or they don't wear the right clothes or whatever. Uh, the calling as a Christian is to make sure that that person realizes that they're welcome at the table, uh, mm. that, that, that the body and blood is for them. And that they're part of the church and that Jesus died for them as well. You know, because I mean, obviously, I mean, we, we all know this, how this works in school and stuff. You know, we, we, I was, I was telling my kids, you know, you had the different classes of system in the school. And I said, Matt Richard was like, you know, here's this bottom layer. I'm, I'm, I was like actually underneath that layer. <laughs> and so, you know, I understand how it feels to be ostracized and you feel like, you, you know, you're, you're not worthy and so forth and, um, and that you're either on the outside. Uh, but that it doesn't work that way in the church. Uh, mm-hmm. that 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 when it comes to our justification in Jesus, uh, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, that what we're justified solely by Christ is a sheer gift uh, in spite of our social standing itself. And so we want to be very, very clear that a person maybe who is on the bottom of the social standing of life, that they realize that they are uh, welcome to that table, just as the maybe the mayor of the city, um, that we're, we're kneeling together at that table, receiving the same body and blood of Christ with the same baptism, the same forgiveness of sins, uh, that it's a equal opportunity, we could say, in the gospel, right? Right. So there, there's kind of two things that, that we'll do with this. The first we'll sort of say is we, we'll go prosperity gospel and say the people who, who God really likes are the ones who have stuff. And, and Jesus comes along and, and he talks about giving gifts that the poor will have the good news preached to them. And they might even still be poor at the end of the sermon, but they'll have the good news uh, that, that the poor are welcome at the table, that that um, your, your social status does not disqualify you. But then old Adam will grab that and say, oh, cool. So it's karma. So so that means that the poor are welcome and the rich are not. I understand. Right, that. Right, 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 and, right. and in the same way that being poor does not disqualify you being rich does not somehow make you less christian either um you have a a, like you said wealth as as a tool now men with powerful tools good great good can come when we use it for good but great evil can come when we use it for evil so when jesus says something like it's easier for a, a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven we're we're not saying he didn't give away enough and because he's not socialist he can't he can't come in what are we saying though well, I mean, I think it all comes down to it comes down to understanding that it's not the not the uh, money is not the root of all evil. It's the mm-hmm. love of money, right? And 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 so I'm 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 I often think about uh, an older parishioner, previous church. We'll call him George, just to make it make it simple. George was 
Uh, he was a multimillionaire many times over. And um, I'm proud to say that all the years that I served at that one church, George never used his money as influence that he needed special treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he had the burden as being uh, somebody who was a multimillionaire. He had this huge burden of like, I don't deserve any of this wealth. I've been given it all. I don't deserve any of it. And he had this burden of like, how do I become a good steward of this money uh, that God has entrusted me and blessed me with? How do I make sure to use this for the sake of my neighbor? How do I use this for the sake of the kingdom of God, for, for the sake of the church? And so his great burden was, how do I manage this uh, to be a good steward? And uh, and and not once uh, did he uh, position himself, jockey himself, and position over everyone else because he gave money, you know. And that that that's that's being humble with your resources, understanding that God gives and He can take, and that it was really not His money to begin with. That He was just mere a mere steward, a, a mere caretaker of these financial goods uh, in this time and season of life. And so it, it comes down to really, it comes down to Jesus, right? It comes mm -hmm. down to forgiveness of sins. And so if you're lowly uh, in status, guess what? Christ died for you. And if you are in a position of status and power, guess what? It's not your status or power that obtains eternal life. It's Jesus who dies for you uh, as well. And so when we find our unity in Christ and we find that what uh, in, in the gospel itself, uh, that again, there's no neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, uh, low or high, that we're all justified equally in Christ because of Christ and Christ alone, period, full stop. Then we can look at all the other social standings and say, okay, uh, if I have lots of money and so forth, God be praised. I can use that for the sake of what the lowly, I can use that for the sake of my neighbor. And those that are lowly, we can go out our way to make sure that they know in spite of what the world is saying or how people in the world look down on them, we make sure that that they know that, hey, you're seen, uh, you're forgiven, uh, you belong at that table right next to me, shoulder to shoulder to receive the forgiveness of sins. And that... Uh, just because you maybe put a mite in the plate, that doesn't that doesn't ostracize you. You know, you're you're, you're welcome. You're, you're you're here. The grace is for you. Absolutely. This is actually my problem with all of the the financial discourses that come from the the four gospels is that it seems to ignore the verse moth and rust destroy. Uh, if if you just sort of start with moth and rust destroy, but Christ has conquered death, it's going to understand what to do with money. It's going to shape that understanding really really quick because if you have no money, well, moth and rust destroy, but you are still redeemed by Him who conquered death. And if all you have is money. Moth and rust destroy, and so you, the the rich will be sent empty away. It's not that because you had yours now, you can't have yours later. It, it's not that you just sort of squandered your your Jesus points too soon on something stupid. It, it's that moth and rust will eventually take earthly goods, and so what you do with them now, it becomes a, a much shorter attention span. There, there are ways I can serve today because I don't need to store up for eternity. I can't take it with me, but Jesus saves, so I'm okay. And in the same way, if you don't have anything now, even though you don't have anything now, the poor are still fed because Jesus saves. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 uh, every time we talk, Harrison, it's always Jesus. And I'm like, God be praised, right? Yeah. God be praised. It's Christ uh, for us when we're low, Christ when we're high, uh, Christ uh, every single day. But yeah, I, I, I don't know what to say. I can't say any better than you just said it. I mean, that's, that's absolutely spot on point. Uh, so this is the social standing in the church, how we treat each other. We treat each other as we are Christians that we're baptized, we're in Christ. And uh, the rest, I guess you could say, the rest is all details. The rest is what uh, sorted out, it flows out of that justification who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and again, yeah, that we lift each other up when we're down. And then uh, those that are up high, uh, not not getting conceited or or prideful in that, uh, understanding that we can't take it with us, you know, as, you, if you, as you've just stated here, that we can't take it with us so that we what might use it for our neighbor. And ultimately, uh, that's the standing of the church, which is actually... Quite awesome. But unlike communism and socialism, it's not something that we take. It's something that we willingly in love, mm -hmm. we give up, right? We give up for our neighbor. And so we're not we're not going around and prying uh, you know, dollar bills out of people's hands and beating them over the head. Uh it's the reverse. You're justified in Christ. And so therefore you use your tools to what? Bless your neighbor. Uh so your hands are free. They're not clinching like white knuckles, but they're freely giving. Uh, because we have a God who has ultimately given us everything in Christ, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm of Christ Jesus. So then guess what? Because I've been given to, I can give. Or as uh, my old friend used to say, uh, actually, still current friend, um, he used to say, <laughs> uh, he used to say to me all the time, yeah, I'm like, what are you up to? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm just spilling on Jesus. I'm spilling Jesus on people today. And I love how he said that. You know, uh, a cup that's full, that's overflowing, is going to spill on others, and that's the essence of the gospel that we have. You know, we spill Jesus on other people because we've been given all good things. I love it, Pastor. Thanks so much. Good to see you, Harrison. Take care, man.